Will Jonathan Oranger please come forward? John, you personify technological innovation. You are a computer programmer extraordinaire, a photographer, and an entrepreneur best known as the founder and CEO of Shutterstock, a stock media and editing tools powerhouse. Your impact on the advancement of technology began while you were in college at Stony Brook when you created your first pop-up blocker for the internet in the mid-1990s. After you earned your bachelor's degree in computer science and applied mathematics from SBU and your master's from Columbia University, you continued developing software and started companies that focused on computer security and privacy tools. In 2003, you saw the need for Microsoft photography and created the first worldwide subscription-based service for acquiring images images, starting Shutterstock with your own pictures. Today, Shutterstock has grown to include more than 125 million photos and video clips. Business Insider named you, quote, the coolest person in all of New York technology, unquote. And you were one of the first to be recognized through our 40 Under 40 program, which celebrates the early career achievements of our alumni. You are a stellar example of how Stony Brook education can take our students far beyond the For your many contributions to technology and computer software, Stony Brook University is proud to bestow upon you the honorary degree of Doctor of Science. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the State University Board of Trustees, the faculty of the State University of New York concurring, I confer upon you an honorary degree, honoris causa, and invest upon you with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. In token thereof, I direct that you be provided with a diploma and vested with the hood representative of the specific degree conferred. President Stanley, distinguished guests, faculty, staff, students, and families, I'm very grateful to be here today among such remarkable honorees. And today I want to share three lessons I learned here at Stony Brook, which have served me well throughout my entrepreneurial journey. And I'm going to be brief because I know you're all ready to be graduates, and honestly, what, and most important to me, I'm ready to be referred to as Dr. Oranger. So, I know that the quicker I finish this speech, the quicker we can both achieve our goals. So, so I started my college education here in 1993. I graduated in 1996. I lived in Rothbard. I majored, Rothbard. I majored in computer science and math. I had a great time, I learned a ton. And thinking back on what I would have done if I were writing this speech as a student 20 years ago, I would have probably started last night around 10 p.m. I would have drank a lot of coffee. I would have probably ordered a pizza, definitely ordered a pizza. I would have opened up my laptop, which at the time probably weighed like 12 pounds, and then I would have began to freak out. Um, so seriously, planning ahead was not my strength, um, but good thing I'm, I, was a, I was a quick learner. So today I know this address to you on this momentous day is filled with potential and possibilities, and ther therefore I have taken this responsibility very seriously. I started five weeks ago. I thought a lot about what I would have wanted to hear when I was graduating. And so I have three life lessons to share. 
They are one, stay curious, two, take calculated risks, and three, embrace diversity. So let's start with the first one, staying curious. There's one thing that I always loved about Stony Brook University, and that was how accessible professors were. It's one thing to be helpful, but what I found was that there were no office hours. That office hours did not really exist. And for the curious like me, I could literally knock on any professor's door, and most of the time, they were open to talking to me. And a great example of this was when my interest in computer graphics, and more specifically virtual reality, and how it intersects with medical visualization, which is, was a topic that was cutting edge 20 years ago, uh, led me on a quest to find more. And so somebody had mentioned a professor named Ari Kaufman. He's still here. And he was working on exactly that. So I looked him up in the university directory and found out that he had an office high up in the medical school building over there. And knowing I had to meet him and find out more, I literally just walked into that building, went up to his floor, knocked on the door, and he invited me in. And this was an ama amazing moment, in, and he indulged my curiosity. And I remember having a very long and involved conversation about this topic. After that meeting, I signed up for his class. And we've modeled my company, Shutterstock, that same way. There are no office hours. And people are free to find me almost any time. And in fact, we actually don't even have offices. Everybody sits out on an open floor. And this is important so that we can collaborate better. And so open collaborative environments, like the one you have here, is rare. And I would make sure that both professionally and personally, you surround yourself with people who embrace your curiosity. Because with curiosity comes vulnerability. And that is where breakthroughs happen. Curiosity opens doors. Literally, in this case, it precedes discovery and invention. It teaches us new things. It makes us better than we could have ever imagined. And it's led me down an amazing path, helped me build an incredible company and find the most remarkable people along the way to inspire me. So my second life lesson, one was staying curious, two is taking calculated risks. So I was sitting in a class. It was called Operating Systems. And at that time, a little company called Yahoo was about to go public. And it was starting to become clear to me just how powerful the internet was. I don't mean to be dating myself here, but I think I am. Um, my professor, his name, his name was Larry Witte, and he's still actually here also. He opened his lecture by astutely saying, there are two ways you can go in life. You can either help people create things, and you'll be incredibly successful at that. Or you can go out and take a risk and create something of your own and create a level of success much greater. And he instantly had my attention. A calculated risk is one where you understand the downside and are still willing to take the risk because there's large potential upside. A calculated risk is what you take when you put your cardboard and duct tape boat in the Rothquad pond for the regatta. The upside is the glory of winning, and the downside is swimming in a pond for a few minutes. The risk is definitely worth it. And today, it's so easy to start a company. You can create a website in a few clicks, gather global research, and test your product with live users all while working at home in your pajamas. And so since I was young, I'd always wanted to start a company. But what I didn't realize until that day, my professor said what he did was how to balance risk and reward. And so I wanted to build a company and take it public. So that's what I did. I, res I resisted taking a job. I figured out if I could write some software and sell it and hopefully pay my rent, I could sustain taking enough calculated risks to find success. That was company try number one, and it took 10 more calculated risks, 10 more different bootstrap companies over a seven year period to get to Shutterstock. It then took 10 more years, but in 2013, Shutterstock broke a $1 billion valuation as a publicly traded company on the New York Stock Exchange. You, you're young, and it, ta it gets harder and harder to take these calculated risks. You'll fail sometimes. You'll learn things about yourself that will scare and inspire you simultaneously. Taking calculated risks, though, it's a numbers game. And Shutterstock was my 10th business, but the law of numbers will be on your side the earlier you start. And I think you should start today. So I'd say if you're thinking about starting a business, pursuing a passion, or merely heading down a path with lots of unknowns, take the advice I received from Larry 20 years ago and start sooner rather than later. And finally, my third topic. One was curiosity, two is taking calculated risk, three, embrace diversity. I truly believe that the most su successful organizations thrive off diversity. Shutterstock is a very diverse company. Our team of 850 people is comprised of 40% women with an effort to keep that number growing. 
and this is just one fact about our diversity. We want to attract the curious, the motivated, the passionate to be our colleagues, no matter where they are or where they come from. Our contributors, customers, employees, they include people in every nation, country, religion, and race. Diversity is not a program, it's a requirement, and I'm sure of three facts. First, the most successful universities will be the ones that search for talent, no matter where that talent is. Second, the most successful companies will be the ones that make diversity a priority. And third, the most successful countries will be the ones that have immigration policies that attract, retain, and truly embrace the smartest people on the planet, <laughs> while at the same time serving those people most in need wherever they come from. Stony Brook is and always has been very diverse and welcoming, and I know that's one of the values the university strives for. And this is one of the reasons why all of you received an amazing education. At Shutterstock, we've expressed our opposition to the recent travel bans that our current administration has tried to enforce. We regularly sponsor H-1B visas to attract talent from all over the world and have seen our sponsored employees to go on to get green cards and even become full citizens of the United States. I checked yesterday, we've done 60 of these green cards in the past seven to eight years. So to wrap this up, I want to go back to the three things I started with. One, stay curious, ask questions, and make sure you get the answers. Two, don't be afraid to take calculated risks, but at the same time, make sure you understand both the upside and the downside. And three, embrace diversity, because only together can we truly make the world the best it can be. So thank you for sharing your graduation day with me, and congratulations, class of 2017.